Um, you guys, I was getting ready to do an introduction, and huh? you just you just interrupted my introduction. Could you please go away, please? I am literally getting ready to start my introduction. Huh? Like, do I need to call SAG here? The Screen Actors Guild, you know, they're, they're, I feel like I should just call them because you guys are, yeah, that's fine. No, you guys go away, or I'm going to call SAG. Okay, go, just go away. No. This is ridiculous. Huh? Thank you. Jeez. Golly. I'm going to call the director. This is not acceptable. I am filing a complaint with SAG and with NAFTA. This is not NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. This is ridiculous. I can't not work under these conditions. <sighs> no, seriously. Oh no, now you're gonna disappear, huh? Okay, that's fine, that's fine. No, no, that's fine, that's fine. No, don't spit at me. Don't spit at me. Don't spit at me. Yeah, if uh, someone could please just call Mr. Spielberg and let him know that we've had a little accident on the set, that would be fine. Uh, it's not a big deal. Insurance should take care of it. Um, if we could get back into the episode, that would be that'd be great. Yeah, I appreciate that. Here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode here on my single-player survival series build on. I am your host, BJ. And here we are in front of the beautiful house. Very happy with this survival house or my, my little starter house here. Uh, it has turned out really well. Let's take a quick look around. I uh, did a little bit of work uh, on the paths around here and, ooh, nice sound. <laughs> There's a cave nearby. Uh, putting a little bit of vegetation up on the building, got a little bit of a uh, little little puff puff coming up from up there. And one thing I didn't mention in the last episode, in fact, here, let's look at it really quick. Options, resource packs. Um, I do have my Sunmark texture pack on. I turned it on in the middle of the last episode and I think I forgot to mention it. Uh, but I like the trees in this pack. So um, I turned it on and then I went ahead and got some vanilla tweaks from uh, Zoom Avoid. This is Zoom Avoid. Uh, mostly related to uh, the shield, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Uh, but first, let's show you into the house really quick. Done a little bit of decoration. This is kind of where we're going to have, I think, like a little kitchenette area. You come in through here, dining, kitchenette, have a little bit of a living room. Uh, we'll put in some fireplaces, stuff like that, and then maybe like a little seating area, and then like a nice little overlook, overlooking uh, the bay here, and that should work out really well. Let's go upstairs really fast. This is where the bedroom is going to be. I still have a lot of decoration clearly to do, but I went ahead and got the fireplaces started up. We'll put in a little little fire in here as well, and we can go downstairs. And I'm going to show you really quick some uh, some plans for down here. Thank goodness there's not, I haven't lit this up yet. In fact, let's go ahead and throw down a couple of torches. Uh, or I'm gonna come down here one day, there's gonna be creepers waiting to kill me. Uh, but I cleaned up some of this too. I had stairs that were coming down here and it didn't work. And one of the things I've been wanting to do was to build an AFK uh, fishing village, or not a village, but like a, a little hut out on the on the water. But then I realized when I was doing that in creative, in my creative world, that it didn't work very well having a, having a AFK platform over water when you had to have a bunch of drops going into a hopper because it just went down in the water and it looked weird. So I'm gonna do it here. One of the things I did is I brought the water into here and I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back all the way into here a little bit and then have my uh, my little fishing area in here. And I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm going to expose it to the sky. So I may have to cheat out here a little bit uh, one way or the other just so I have a good sky exposure. Uh, but we'll figure that out. I think at the beginning of the next episode, I think will work really well. But this is where that's going to go. And then I'll have a bunch of other storage down here. So this will be a good little safe spot to come down, AFK, have storage, things like that. Pretty stoked about that. Now the next thing we have to address here, in fact, let's this do a little bit of housekeeping here at the beginning of the episode. Uh, I need to armor up while I'm at it. Uh, so I have a little bit here and I went and found a bunch while I was mining. Uh, so let's get that. And the other thing I want to build is, I'm not sure what the recipe is 100%. Uh, let's get this guy out. I also need a shield. Yep, there we go. And that's the point uh, behind the resource pack from Azumavoid is he has a texture pack that lowers the shield right there on the left hand side. So typically you would see that and it would be up quite a bit higher. Like if I'm standing here, it would actually be covering up the bottom part of the the um, crafting table there. So uh, like it would be up that high or roughly. So it lowers that down, which is actually really nice. And then it has a couple of other uh, things like that that actually help the game. So it's a little bit easier to see, particularly when you're doing something like a let's play like this. So we've got that ready to go. Let's go ahead and craft a little bit of armor. I've already got a helmet, so let's do some pants. And let's do that. And then boots, I need some boots. And then, um, and the reason that I'm doing this is here, I'll go show you here in one second. We're gonna step out of the game really quick 
and go into uh, a kind of a desktop view so you can see some of the work I'm going to be doing uh, on the fact that this is now a server. Started off episode one in a single player world because I had intended on playing it in a single player world for some time, but then after thinking about it for a little bit, I decided that later on in the season, I am going to uh, turn this into a multiplayer server that I can either upload uh, in chunks so that everybody can play on it uh, with particular uh, chunks of the world or regions of the world or uh, set it up so that it's something that I'm actively playing on that I invite other people to come in and play on and then I isolate part of it so I can continue to build as part of the series. So I haven't fully decided yet, but um, what I did is I went ahead and I set up uh, the environment in a multiplayer world and it also makes it a lot easier for me to be able to do time lapses and things like that using my camera account versus opening up to LAN. So uh, I do have a Shockbite account that I've been testing. It hasn't been going particularly well. I've been having some issues with it that I'm trying to resolve. So that's not the one that I'm actively using to film this series right now. It is a it is a local version, which I'm going to go ahead and open up right here because I wanted to show you something that I'm going to modify based on some information that I, or a comment that I got from somebody else uh, in the last video. And that is that we have difficulty right now set to normal. And what I want to do is I want to set this to hard. And so I'm going to go ahead and set it to hard mode in here so that we can see it, uh, save the server properties, and then let's see if uh, when I run it, it opens up in hard mode. And if it doesn't, then we'll go ahead and do it, setting through difficulty in the command line as well. So let's go ahead and open this bad boy up and then do uh, difficulty, difficulty. See what it's set to right now. It is set to hard. So. We are now in hard mode. We started off the, the series in this episode in... Oop, I went ahead and closed it. <laughs> uh, we started off the series and this episode in normal mode, but now from this point on in the episode, we are in hard mode. And I have no idea if it's going to affect me or not. I guess we will find out. Uh, but then it looks like I need to go ahead and restart the, <laughs> the server, and then we'll get back into the episode. So there you go. Now we are on hard mode, which was... Uh, I, I had actually intended to start the world that way. I just kind of forgot to set it. And then when I mentioned it in my last episode, somebody suggested, like I said, that uh, hard mode would be a good idea, and I agreed. So I think it was worth changing it up. Well, actually, no, I'm going to need these. So the next thing we need to really focus on in our world is food sources. And I'm definitely um, tired of eating bread. I have a little bit of a gluten issue, so I need to get some better uh, sources of meat. And of course, you, you kind of have two main sources in the game. You have veggies and crops, and then you have meat and uh, and livestock. And so... Uh, the episode number three, we're going to be focusing on the food or on the veggie side of it, the crop side. But in this episode, we're going to focus on the livestock side. And uh, as the rest of the series is going, the sort of the intent is we need to have something that is aesthetic and deals with uh, the game mechanic that we need to deal with uh, in an interesting way. And then we're also going to have a redstone component. So the same is going to be with uh, our food sources. And from the livestock side, uh, the only sort of automatic, completely automatic livestock farm that I know of that you can really make is a chicken farm. Uh, but I also have some good semi-automatic uh, cow and sheep and pig cookers as well. Um, but I think right now I'm going to focus on kind of cows and chickens. And so what I need to do is gather up all the livestock that I'm going to need, get it over to the area where I'm going to build the barn that I'll show you here in just a minute. Oh, what was that? I think I might be having a little bit of a graphics issue. I wonder if this is going to show up in the video or not. Uh, anyway, so we're going to get all the livestock together, get it over where the barn is going to be built. I'll show you where the barn is going to be built. And then uh, we're going to start building the barn. So I think that's going to be the, the, this whole episode is going to be that construction. And I have some ideas about doing that in a slightly different way than I've done in the past in terms of, of uh, doing time lapses and things like that. So let's go ahead and get our livestock over there. And uh, can I grab this guy? Yep, let's go. I could probably just use wheat, but since I uh, have this sudden uh, access to leads, I think I'll just, uh, I'll just think I'll just use the leads. Oh, hello. You want to join the party? Come on along. We got a good party going. There's four of us now. Well, I guess five of us technically if there's the four of you guys. All right. We're going to be building back up into this hill just a little bit where the, about where this tree is. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig down over here with you guys. Uh, let's see. Keeping you focused on the seeds. And then get you guys down in here. Oop. And then we can start breeding you guys up a little bit. Do I have enough? Oh, I only had one seed. Oops. Uh, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, now you guys are out of your days. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, there'll be lots more of you here in just a little bit. So uh, I do have my chickens and I have my cows over here now. I got these guys strapped up over here. Hopefully they're still on there. Yep, they're still good to go. I'm going to have to move you here in a second. 
Uh, but this is the area where the barn's going to go. So we're gonna have this path that's gonna be coming around, kind of sneaking over through here. We'll have the barn back up in here. And then episode number three is gonna be dealing with this hillside right here. Uh, and I'll tell you at the end of the episode what that's going to be <laughs> this episode. Uh, but we have this barn right here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is kind of keeping in mind uh, future expansion and how I want this to work both from kind of a practical aesthetic standpoint and also from a redstone standpoint is with the chicken cooker, I'm gonna need a fair amount of area underground uh, to do the redstone. And I do also for the chicken cooker. So if I built this in just kind of a flat area like this with no sides on it, then I can only go down. I wouldn't have the opportunity to kind of go back into the hillside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck two sides of it back into this hillside that's three or four blocks tall and kind of bury two sides of it, especially the back side and maybe this side over here. And then we'll have one side that opens up this way and one side that opens up that way. And then that way, back in this corner, I can actually dig down and put all the redstone and kind of keep it hidden back inside the barn. So that kind of gives you a quick explanation of what the goal is here. Uh, now I need to go ahead and, like I said, clear this area out, get it all prepped to go, move some of the livestock around, and then get all the materials ready to go. So uh, we can even do that maybe through a quick time lapse as well. So here we go. So I'm going to try something that I've never done on this channel before, and that is voice over over the time lapse rather than just let the music play in the background. And I thought it might be a good opportunity to talk about some of the aesthetic and technical design choices I make as I make my way through this build. To start with, I begin to clear the area for the base of the barn. And as I mentioned earlier, I want to tuck this back into the hill on two sides to leave room to cover up the redstone I'll need for the chicken and the cow cookers that we'll be building over the next few episodes. I start to lay out the foundational columns for the barn that'll determine how wide the barn actually is, how many livestock stalls we'll have, and how tall it'll be based on where the columns land. Now, that back area that's going to be tucked into the hill and has the cows and the chicken pens is not symmetrical with the rest of the build. It is only two blocks deep, whereas everything else is three blocks deep. I tend to start building with the framing and structural walls first, just like we do on real buildings. Here I a backfill with stone and cobble walls against the hillside and then start removing the grass on the floor to replace it with other dirt, gravel, cobble, and hay blocks. Now I hate to admit it, but this is actually a really good view of a pretty major mistake that I made that's going to cause me to have to remove half the columns and move them over one block. And there it is. The central walkway is only two blocks wide, which I decided was just a little bit too narrow. So the solution was I had to move the central supports over one block, making the walkway three blocks wide, and then move the outside wall back in one block so that the bays are only two blocks wide. This also makes the roof a little bit shorter, which ended up being the right choice in the long run. As I start adding on the roof, I do want to advocate to you to never build your roofs with only stairs. At the very least, not all stairs are the same block. It's just too plain. Adding different colors and blocks can add variety and add character to the roof, as well as tell part of your story. Is it the ornate roof of a wealthy owner? Is it run down and sagging and about to collapse? These can all help to tell a story of your world. Now here I am laying it all out with spruce stairs, but I do do a lot of work a little bit later on to break it up with different shapes, colors, and forms. Now think about all your favorite Minecraft builders, how they tend to build buildings very simplistically to begin with, and then they go back and start breaking them up and adding detail a little bit later. And that's what I'm starting to do here. Here, I'm starting to add some of that unique kind of Flemish and Dutch design character by extending and dropping the eaves and overhangs on either end. And also, I just want to point out, I love the spruce trap doors as one big sliding barn door. And there we go, it is uh, for the most part done, I think. There's a couple things I think I wanna add to it. Maybe one more thing we'll do in this episode. As, as I've been looking at it, I wanna add some sort of kind of eyebrow windows over the top of this guy or um, dormers or something like that. I think I wanna put one or two. I gotta figure out the right spot to put it though. I'm not 100% sure yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it kind of stew maybe for a day or two as I think about it. But I definitely wanna add some more character to this, these roofs. Uh, right now, this is a little bit overly simplistic. Um, maybe I'll do it in this episode. I'll have to see how it goes. But first, let's go ahead and add in uh, some of this stuff here. We got to add in, uh, let's see, I'm not going to put one on this side because I want these to be open for a, uh, a, an individual animal of some sort. So we'll do that on this side over here. Oops. There we go, put that in like that. I'll leave this open for now. Let's go ahead and close that off like this. Like this, like that. Add in some more fences here, one there. There we go, and this 
Should be good. I think I'm gonna do something to put chickens back in here. Oh, that's right. I didn't want one right there. Keep putting that there when it's not supposed to be there. <laughs> you can hear the chickens back in the background there. That's right. This is where your home is gonna be. And so uh, they're gonna be living in here for a little bit. I need to add a little bit more lighting, I think. I'll add a few more lanterns. I got one there. I ran out. Put a couple in here. And I'm gonna put a loft up here, I think. Maybe we'll do that together before uh, this episode is over. But right in here, We'll come back in here. So the chickens, I'll just breed them in here until we have enough. But this is where the chicken cooker is going to go, is right into here. So I'll be able to come in. Um, I'll probably have the cooker component here and end up having a some sort of chest or something right there that I can come in and grab on this side. And then over here, I'll probably have the cow cooker right here with the same thing, with the chest or something over here. That way I can just come down the middle aisle of the barn here, come back, grab some brief, grab some chicken, and we'll be good to go. And uh, let's see, do I have any of these guys? Let's do this really quick. So thinking from a loft standpoint, I think I would want this to have these guys. I don't know that I have enough. So we'll just kind of start to lay this in here. Let me put one here. Do I have any, oh, I do. Uh, I didn't even plan to do this on purpose, but here we'll go ahead and add. Oh, can I not add that on a stair? I guess not. So we'll take that one out and move it over one. Even though I'm probably gonna have to take the stair out when I actually get to putting in my chicken cooker stuff but there we go come up here with this guy up to a loft area and then i'll go ahead and finish this loft area off no that's not what i wanted not right there this guy one uh why did i go up high eh, maybe we'll leave it there what the heck adds a little bit of character to it we'll leave the same thing on this side uh fill this back up in here we'll put some more of the wheat or uh, yeah of the uh, hay bales back up in here so it feels like a little bit of a loft and then uh, maybe a couple of chests things like that here let's get back down here and finish this guy off. So we're gonna have beef on this side, or cows, <laughs> beef eventually, but cows to start with, uh, chickens on this side. I'll probably put some more, actually, you know what I might do is keep these do the same thing. Have this here, leave that, and put in a single gate right here. Same on this side. And then I'm gonna put sheep on one side and pig on the other. That's a good idea, so I'll have, uh, that's perfect, all four, so I'll have chickens, beef, <laughs> cows, uh, sheep, and pigs. That should work really well. So we'll go ahead and close this one in. Was that gonna work? Okay, good. I wanted that on there. That, that one over here. Is that completely closed in? Completely closed in? I think we're good to go. All right, I just need to move my cows in. Come on, buddies. You guys wanna go? Let's see if I can do this without... Uh, oh, I lost them both. Do I have any... No? Uh, if I was smart, I had weed on me, but I don't. So let's just grab you guys. Let's see if this one can get this to work. Come on, boys. Come on. Come on, boys. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get them in this way, but we'll try. Come on. You guys gonna come in this way? All right, I'll push you in. These leads are just a little bit, there we go. Just long enough. Oh, no, no, don't go out. There you go. All right, got the cows in. Let's go get uh, some of those chicken and some of the pigs. And I don't know that I'm gonna be able to get sheep over in this episode. Uh, there's quite a few that are like over in here. Just need to get them back over here. And I don't think you guys wanna watch me dragging sheep around. Although there was a pig right over here somewhere. Are you still over here? Here, piggy, piggy, piggy. Are you around here? There you are. Oh, there's even another one over there. Let's go get this one. If I was smart, I'd bring my carrots with me. Uh, let's see if I can get you through here. I gotta write the best this out. There we go, perfect. All right, you come with me, friend. You gotta go a little faster, though. Yeah, these leads are a good idea. I should do this instead of trying to drag them through with carrots. Uh, where did that other pig go? Was he over here? Oh, there you are. Can I get you out of the water? I don't know if I can, actually. How did you get in the water? Okay, oh, good. Oh, now I got you both in the water. Come on. Come on out. Uh, that's an interesting uh, mechanic. I'll have to remember that. Go ahead. We're gonna get you out too? Come on. Come on. There we go. That'll work. All right. Let's go ahead and get these guys in here. I'll get the chickens in and then we'll come back and uh, finish up the barn for this episode and talk about what we're gonna be doing in the next episode. Come on, boy. Come on. Let's go to your new home. We've got a new home for you. There's your brother. I can hear him over there. We'll get him too in just a minute. The pigs are free. The pigs are free. <laughs> I accidentally left the. Uh, I had a solid block right here. And so they were able to jump out of there. Come on, come on, come on, son. There you go. A little bit further. That, and we already got the uh, we got the sheep all in and ready to go. And I went and picked up 
I've got two stacks of eggs, roughly. I gotta get this guy, come on. I got two stacks of eggs to go ahead and get my chickens in there. So what I've been doing is just kind of breeding those chickens up that I had and hoping that they were going to lay some eggs so that I'd have enough that I could at least get a couple in there and start breeding them up a little bit. There we go, come on in, come on, come on. There we go. All right, here, I'll tell you what. I'll give you guys a little bit of, maybe, maybe, maybe the baby pig, there we go. Got a little more pigs going in. All right, let's try the chickens. Let's see if we can get these guys going here. Come on, give me a couple, give me a couple. There we go. Hopefully they can't get from there over. So there's four. Oh, none out of there at all? <laughs> That's right, at least I got four. That's a good start. Now hopefully they stay in there and can't get out. Let's let's go ahead and move that one just in case. I don't want you guys, uh, there you go. That's better. Can't really fly out of there, can't really fly out of there. All right, you guys should be golden. We're good to go. All right, but let's talk really quickly about what we're gonna be doing in the next two episodes. Um, in this next episode, like I said, we've been working on the meat side and we might go ahead and do the chicken cooker in one of the next couple of episodes, but the big one for next episode, do I have any blocks here I can do this with? Um, I could do it with the andesite, I think. But what I'm gonna do out here is a farm field. So we're gonna be doing fields and then we're gonna be doing a windmill. And, I gotta, and I've been getting a lot of pictures and if you go to my Discord, I have a bunch of pictures in the, I'm probably gonna die. I might be able to make it to the water from here. Uh, in my Discord of windmills from the Holland to the Netherlands. And they're kind of unique, I think, in the way that I typically see windmills done in Minecraft. And so I'm kind of excited to do that, actually. But the idea behind this windmill in particular is we're gonna have these farm fields around it, some paths that go through it, and start, being, start tying this area over into this area where I have some other plans. And then back right over on the other side of the house, on the other side of the beehive, is where I'm gonna have this mine and start tying things in along this edge. But We'll have this field, we'll have the windmill here, and then the base of this windmill is we're going to be doing our first, uh, kind of first official redstone build, uh, technical build in terms of a mini nano farm. And I do have a couple of tutorials on my channel right now for that nano farm, but I wanna show how to incorporate that in something like this. And then that way, uh, that is going to help me get all the seeds and stuff that I need to plant all the fields, and then will also be a great source of veggies for breeding up the animals and then for future ideas as well but we will be doing that in the next episode. Uh, but I thought I'd stand up here on top of this windmill for a second, kind of give you an idea of where it is. You can kind of see the starter house over there, a great view of the barn. And the idea is kind of back there over my shoulder, you can see where the bed is and kind of where that, that main landing area is. I have to chop that tree down. <laughs> I need some more spruce. I think I'm officially out of spruce, but being able to see it uh, from the village over there, up here on top of this hill, I thought it'd be kind of fun to, to end the episode up here where the windmill is going to be. Yeah, it'll be probably another 10 or 15 blocks taller than this is right here but you get an idea of what the view is going to be like up here. And now I, hopefully I can jump down without killing myself. I have 11 XP, I need to save that. I need to enchant some stuff. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Hope you enjoyed the barn build. I certainly did, I got a little bit of work I have to do on it this week. Of course, I need to finish up the roof and do some stuff around it, but uh, I think that's gonna go fine. I'm looking forward to doing it. Uh, if you guys did enjoy this episode, please consider hitting that like button, uh, maybe even subscribing if you're not currently already. I got a lot more episodes of this coming up soon. In the future, they got build on. I've got the tutorials and I have my Truly Bedrock series. I'll be trying to get out three episodes a week and hopefully you guys can stop by the channel for at least a couple of those. But either way, I really appreciate your time. I hope you all enjoyed it. We will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.